Welcome to Earnings Call. We have another week of upcoming earnings. We're going to touch on some that we delivered last week. Can Lennar build on their success? Can DRI, which is Darden Restaurants, can they cook up some success? And did FedEx deliver? Plus, we got KB Homes, AutoZone, CarMax, and Costco coming up this week. All these and more coming up right now. We've had a great several weeks of earnings here lately, even though we're on the backside of Q2, and now we're almost getting ready to get into Q3. But right now we have a light, a light sprinkle of earnings this week. We only have 111 companies declaring overall, and I'm only looking at nine companies this week. But let's start with what we had last week, uh, beginning with uh, FedEx. All right, now FedEx delivered. Boy, it sure did deliver. And the stock uh, reported a quarterly profit drop. Um, it just was not good news as people are scaling back on their overnight or two-day delivery options. And they're really scaling back on that. If we look at the chart, uh, we can see that we estimated, well, the market had estimated a move of 11%, a little over 11%. And that's where FedEx delivered. It delivered an actual move of 15 and a quarter percent drop. All right. 15 a quarter percent drop. And we will see that th that was our trade of the week last week. We'll take a look here in a few minutes of how that trade did. But let me tell you what, making money when a stock goes down is a pretty cool thing. And then let's move over to um, Darden Restaurants. Darden Interesting for Darden, we expected a move less than 5%, but it actually built on, um, uh, cooked up some good results. Um, and well, let's just say their results weren't that good, but the market interpreted it a lot differently. Okay. The stock was estimated to move less than 5%, yet the stock actually moved up, up higher, up over eight and a quarter percent. Taking a look at the chart. For Darden restaurants here, you can see the gap up there, a move of eight and a quarter percent. And then after a little pullback on Friday, today we're up slightly about one percent. So market is really liking what they see in Darden restaurants. And uh, even though uh, they they struggled, they missed Wall Street estimates for the uh, for the quarter, and the you know CEO just wasn't. Uh, very optimistic, but boy, the market just didn't see it. They see something totally different. All right. And then finally, uh, what about Lennar building on their success? Well, Lennar uh, closed lower by about 5%. Uh, we expected an earnings move less than 7%. Okay. But so the company dropped on disappointing Q4 guidance. All right. And then they actually, but, you know, with the Fed funds rate cut of, 50 basis points last week. The market is really kind of optimistic for this sector for home builders. And so it's not surprising that even though we were expecting a move of up to 7% on the stock, and the stock, if we look at the chart, actually moved down only 5.33%. And then you throw in today's move, it's higher by 1.4% right now. I think this is really optimistic, and the market is looking at this as a, a as a buy. Any dip on these guys is uh, possibly a buy, and so uh, this is a possibly with the anticipation of rate cuts continuing for this year and on into next. You know, we could see home builders be, um, um, benefiting, but I would take a look if I were you at what the bonds are doing right now because bonds are dropping, which means rates are rising. This was a classic buy the rumor, meaning rates go down, bonds go up, rates go down, and sell the news. Okay, bonds went down, rates go up, and that's what we're seeing right now. Is that going to reverse? Who knows? We, we will see um, here uh, shortly. But right now, I think Lennar is in good shape. It's still in an uptrend and still could continue as we move into uh, the next quarter. All right now, so what do, what do we have coming up? We actually have some big popular names uh, coming up this week. If we take a look at our earnings preview, we really, for stocks that we're watching right now, we really get started tomorrow, okay? And uh, 
Some some stocks that I'm looking at include KB Home, again, in that home sector market right there with Lennar. We have AutoZone. You would not believe how expensive this stock is. We'll take a look at it here in just a moment. In fact, let's let's um, take a look at the chart. Let's start with KB Home because I want to I want to actually show you. Here's an example of KB Home moving higher. The estimated move of this stock is a little less than five percent, though. Okay, now earnings are going to come up tomorrow on Tuesday after market close. We expect just a little bit of move um, on KB on KBH. But the trend could continue. The trend higher, as you can see, it is in an uptrend. All right. Uh, if we go do go then over to AutoZone, take a look at this stock. This is a three thousand dollar stock. Okay. If you don't follow AutoZone on a regular basis, you might want to just from the fact that this stock is is volatile. Okay. It has. If I pull in more data here, in fact. Let me go from a daily chart real quick to a weekly chart and just kind of see, look at this trend for uh, for AutoZone, just a really well-run company, uh, but their earnings, uh, they expect a move of less than 5% for AutoZone. Now, I don't know if that's going to be up or down, but that's something that uh, you might want to consider if you are going to play earnings, okay? And usually what we do is like to sell a premium around these types of stocks that we have these low numbers on, these low estimated move uh, numbers. We like to sell premium because we don't ex and anticipate a big move in the stock. But then it's going to be a different story when we talk about a stock like CarMax. All right. Here, CarMax um, is currently trading at 76.45. This stock is also a mover. Okay, but we see an estimated move here of greater than 13% for, for CarMax. This is what we call a potential breakout candidate. And boy, you can see kind of in the past around these other earnings announcements. Yes, the big moves that you're seeing, the gap back here in April, the big candle here in July with the big follow through. Those are earnings announcements. And we see earnings coming up on Thursday, September 26, which is this Thursday, before market open for CarMax. And it could once again be a big mover here. You don't probably want to sell premium unless you're going way out of the money and getting your money's worth. Here, we like to do straddles and strangles on this type of stock. Lastly, taking a look at Costco this week. Costco has an estimated move here of less than 5%. Stock is really doing well. Consumers are doing well, but this is a $900 stock. Amazing, the pricing of some of these companies. A $900 stock, and yet we have an estimated move of less than 5%. Earnings are Thursday, September 26, after market close. So really, although we do have some earnings coming up tomorrow, again, on KB Home and AutoZone are tomorrow, now, Wednesday, you know, Micron Technology is in there. Micron is a potential mover, but it's right. It's got this estimated move that, man, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to make money right now with the way that the options are priced. That's why I didn't really list it here. And then you have Cintas, which is the uh, uniform delivery company, Accenture on Thursday. I mean, there are some really nice names, but I wanted to highlight those stocks that really have the potential for um, uh, uh, either making money by selling premium or buying premium. Now, we talk about a lot of stocks here in each, each and every weekend, so be sure to check out the chapter feature below each and every video, and you can jump to the stock that you want to, to hear about and see the chart and see the analysis of, of the chart. But we really, last week, we only had one stock that moved greater than its estimated move and that's how good it gets, all right? So speaking of last week, all right, let's take a look at our selected trade of the week, and that was a strangle that we did on Federal Express, and I showed you that that stock, as far as traders go, and as far as having the right strategy at the right time, it paid off. If we take a look at today's, or uh, the results on Friday, uh, the stock, Again, gap down um, over 15%. 
this generated a profit of over $1,300 in just four days. That's a 60% return on risk as the risk in the trade was just over uh, just over $2,000 and our total profit in it was $1,330 if you took it off towards the end of the day on, th- on, uh, on Friday. All right. So very nice, nice profits for, uh, for Federal Express as, again, they see their consumers kind of tightening up on the purse strings as they uh, go into the fall quarter well, uh, of this year. All right. So we'll, we'll, keep an eye, we'll definitely keep an eye on the next earning cycle for FedEx as well. See if this is a trend that continues into their biggest delivery season of the year, which is the fourth quarter. All right. So with that said, then let's get on to our trade of the week this week. We are looking at Jabil. All right. Uh, JBL is the symbol here. Um, This stock is probably one of the biggest movers of the week. All right. Jabil, we did we hadn't even talked about it up to this point. I kind of wanted to keep it under the wraps. Typically, uh, this stock has um, an earnings move potential of over 16%. Let me just double check and see if that's still the case right now. I have one little tab open. Oh, just dropped to 15.87% is the estimated move on this. As you can see, this currently, and I'm looking at the tip of the risk graph on the right-hand side, the black uh, lines that form that little tip there. It goes on to the debit side, and I'm seeing this trade costing a little over $1,000, so about half the price of our FedEx trade last week, but still right up there around $1,000 for this trade. And we're expecting a move of over 15% for this stock as we get into earnings later this week. This stock has earnings on Thursday. And let me just double check on the timing. It is before market open on Thursday. So we will know those results by Thursday afternoon and seeing how the stock is doing. All right. So we've had some great runs here recently. I was calculating it right up. We're right upwards of $5,000 of profit just between the last two weeks of trades that we've given out. That's quite, that's quite the number on those results. And we show those, these results each and every week right here. Be sure and download our guide on these breakout trades. Uh, that's available from ewotrader.com forward slash straddle. It's a free guide for you to show you how we trade these earnings events and how our subscribers profit around these earnings cycles. These are potential movers each and every earnings cycle. So with that said, that's our earnings call for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Everyone have a great trading week, and I'll see you next week. Take care.